uh, Wasabi Wallet. Um, let's start by just getting familiar with the mental model of how we think about privacy in Bitcoin. So the first question I have is, how many people here think they understand the UTXO model, the way that transactions work? Somewhat, yeah. The only thing you have to understand for this presentation, and I'm hoping uh, all our audience will understand this, is that there are two ways to do accounting in, 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 uh, in finance. The first way is account-based, which you're all very familiar with. Another way is, is by uh, a UTXO model, or a coins-based coins model. Right? In an account-based system, it's very simple. It's like a bank. You have one account, you send money, you always send exactly the amount of money you want, and the recipient gets exactly that amount of money. And when you receive money, it's the same idea. It's very simple, very intuitive. The UTXO model is a little bit less intuitive, but the funny thing is you're all familiar with it if you think about the way that you think about cash, because cash is also a coin-based model. And just a little sort of explanation here, this is also how we differentiate between the way Bitcoin works and the way Ethereum works. And unfortunately, the way Ethereum works uh, actually uh, loses out to a lot of privacy because the account-based model is, is, is much less private. Um, so let's think about how Bitcoin is a coins-based model, a unspent transaction output-based model. So how does it look like? When you spend cash, for example, to buy a beer. Let's say you have a 500 euro note, and I apologize for my European uh, lead dev who, who, who made these slides, um, but 500 euro note, it's all, it's all the same uh, fiat money. And um, <clears throat> there is no way for you to buy a beer with a 500 euro note and still keep that 500 euro note. For example, you can't cut the note and give only five euros worth of that note. What you really have to do is consume the entire note. The note is gone. If you have a 500 euro note, you need to spend even five euros, the entire note is gone, right? And by the way, I'm seeing a lot of not nodding uh, heads uh, and some new, some new very well-dressed folks coming in. Um, so we're just talking about the mental models of how to think about privacy and how there's an account-based system and how there's a cash-based system. Um, so um, just out of curiosity, um, who, who, who sort of sees where I'm going, understands the UTXO model, right? Okay, good, excellent. So if I want to spend a 500 euro note and I want to give Bob 100 euros, really what I have to do all the time is give Bob the entire note and give myself change. So the note has to be broken, right? So every time you do a cash-based transaction, unless you are giving, you are paying the exact amount, what do you have? You have change. And oftentimes when you spend cash, sometimes you have a big uh, bill that you can spend and it gets broken down. Sometimes you have to reach into your wallet and get several small bills to pay for something, right? So that's the model that we're thinking about. So this is how we would illustrate that. And with Bitcoin, it's the same idea. So if we take Alice here, Alice has six Bitcoins in a single coin, just like a single bill. She wants to give Bob two Bitcoins. What does she have to do? She has to consume all six Bitcoins and give herself back four Bitcoin, right? And from here, we get into some very basic math called graph theory. This is all, all that, we, when we say the word graph theory in math, all we mean is circles that are joined together with lines. So essentially, we're watching things kind of move, move, move along in this way. So here's how we would, would build this sort of transaction graph of Alice's behavior. So Alice gives two Bitcoin to Bob, gets four Bitcoin to herself. The next time Alice wants to spend some Bitcoin, she's going to spend the Bitcoin she got from herself as change. There's two Bitcoin to Esther, and she has another two Bitcoin for herself. And so you, if you follow that yellow line, that's the graph, right? That's the trail. Now, the nice thing with cash is because cash is physical, nobody has to worry. Nobody has to know. Nobody has to record the history of that cash. When you have a 20 US dollar bill in your pocket, you don't think to yourself, oh, I'm concerned that maybe this $20 bill was used uh, by an illegal immigrant to receive money for some construction work under the table. Or maybe this $20 bill was used to buy marijuana on a college campus. You don't worry about that because the trail of that $20 bill is very irrelevant. Well, with Bitcoin, because everything is digital and recorded, that starts to become a problem. And really, when we talk about the, the attackers of this model, the people who want to de-anonymize you, who um, want to figure out where this money is going, these are forensics companies, companies like Elliptic or Chainalysis. And what these companies want to do is they want to cluster your coins. They want to know you, which coins belong to you, how is your behavior, where, where did you spend your coins, which other clusters did you, did you touch with, um, and start to build a model about your behavior. Um, and this model is a sort of an, a big invasion of, of privacy. <clears throat> 